Welcome back to Super Chat. Morning, Gary. How are you? Very fine, sir. Well, as we've been doing regularly each month, I'd like to begin by asking if you could provide our listeners the very latest status regarding your master facility project for Northwest Local Schools. We're getting to the fun part of the master facility project. We're starting to work on the design phase. We are currently working with our architects to see what the inside design of all three buildings will look like. I want to remind everyone that we want the design interior to be the same for all three schools. The facade on the outside will be different and we'll get input on that. But currently what's happening is our architects are going to our buildings. They're meeting with our teaching staff. They are visiting classrooms. They are visiting teachers during their planning time to see what they need in terms of planning, in terms of teaching space, um, how they instruct, and, and what needs to be incorporated into the new schools. So that's exciting. Then once that occurs, we will pull together teams from each school. Uh, we've requested five staff members. We will also include all our classified employees. Transportation is a big part of the new schools. Um, administrators, our cafeteria, our nurses, our art, music, PE teachers because of those large spaces our custodians, our maintenance, our technology department, every aspect that needs to be looked at for our new schools. We will meet two full days. Um, we have a person from ODE who works on designing 21st century schools. And I want to get this out there as much as we can. 21st century schools look vastly different than when we as parents went to school and attended. It was mostly teacher-led from the front of the school. The rooms are all uh, with desks and, and rows, six deep six across the front. Well, that's changing. We have a different philosophy and with technology, it just adds to and enhances what we can do with our students. So our room setups will not be the same. Um, we will have the ability to group desk in different small groups, uh, maybe five over in the corner, seven over in the other corner, um, technology overhead projector, a reading area for students. So we're looking at flexible spaces, and, and again, the hard part for folks to remember is, and it's not that they don't think about this, but you think about your house, you'll live there 25 to 30 years. We're looking at schools that will last 50 to 70 years here. So a lot can change in terms of technology and everything else. We will also have field trips where we will go to other school districts that have built new schools that have flexible spaces so we can get um, some visuals of what it looks like. Um, and then we expect groundbreaking after we finalize um, the documents with the architects and everything to occur around September. And I've had a lot of people ask me when we'll have a groundbreaking ceremony. We haven't established that yet, but we will make sure we get it out every way as possible um, once that is established. So it's an exciting time. We're working with the architects, working on the interior layout and design. We are very aware that we want these to be community schools. So our gyms and the way we place them for rentals, the ball fields that we put around the field, um, we're looking at every aspect so that our community can get 100% usage of our facilities. Yeah, excellent. Good report. You know, at Northwest Local Schools, you have dual credit offerings for your high school students. Uh, you call this program, I believe it's uh, College Credit Plus. And I was wondering if you could explain uh, just how this is working and how broad is it in terms of the course offerings? I wanted to revisit this because we had mentioned it earlier in the year. Yes. Um, but we are not getting enough students to enroll. And I just want to revisit it to establish it for next year and to put some thoughts in some of our parents and students' mind. First of all, College Credit Plus replaces our due enrollment and our post-secondary educational options. It is a program that has, has been established to enhance students' college and career readiness, post-secondary success by enabling college-ready 7th through 12th grade students who qualify for college admission to take a college-level course and earn both their high school credit at our high schools and, most importantly, college credit if they complete the coursework. This is a very valuable tool for our parents. I want them to understand that the rigor in this class has really stepped up. It is of college rigor. Um, that's why it's called College Credit Plus. But most importantly, 
if a student is successful in this class, it counts as their college credit. We're currently partnered with UC. So UC has some uh, community schools in Blue Ash and some other areas. But to take this class in high school and pass it, you're getting college credit. So really, if um, your son or daughter takes advantage of this program, they could leave the district with anywhere from 15 to 25 credits that they would not have to pay for in college. This year, the timelines are passed. The intent to participate form was April 1st, so it's closed. But I, I also want parents who, and every now and then we have some athletes that really stand out. They, they go above and beyond, and so some of them want to graduate early. Um, we have a couple students with the possibility at each high school next year to graduate in January and then head off to college and enroll um, in January at the college that um, they are playing a sport at and start their college career early. One of the easiest ways to do that is to get in this College Credit Plus program and to get your fourth year English out of the way, fourth year math credit that's needed. But it's an opportunity that people just don't think of. The value of it, it's, it saves you money. The only cost comes is if a student does not pass the course, then there is a, a fee that the parent has to pay for that. But if everything goes as expected, um, the students get great rigor. They understand what it's gonna, what's going to be expected of them in college and how much work is involved. But it's just a great opportunity that we need more parents to pay attention. So where do you find information about this? On your school's website, on our district homepage. If they listen to our podcast, again, this is the second time I brought it up. I brought it up earlier, but we still didn't get the amount of students enrolled that we wanted to. We did double our enrollment from last year to this year, but we need to go even further because this is a great opportunity for our parents. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Last week, I was speaking with a school district. It was not an Ohio school. It was from another state. They were talking about the barrier for many families, at least in their mind, is that the cost of college seems so unobtainable that, and, and there may be some truth to that. Uh, well, there is truth to that, but this particular school district that I was speaking with was part of a state pilot project that is implementing student 529 plans that get funded uh, with $25 is the minimum seed money to start the account. And then the state was matching the contributions. It was a pretty impressive program because, and the statistics was showing, what they were reporting was that if this 529 plan had $500 or more, there was a greatly increased probability and chance that that student would go on to some post-secondary education. And it's not necessarily a traditional four-year degree or a two-year degree, but it's advanced training, maybe particular skills. But I thought that that was a kind of a cool addition. And uh, hey, maybe uh, the state of Ohio will look into something through the Department of Education as well. So, uh, But good report on this. It is an important topic, and it's something that you need to think of now, people, because... Uh, if your student is jumping into high school, you can accumulate a lot of really valuable credits between now and graduation. And, and uh, that's my soapbox for today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just an opportunity you don't want parents to pass up. College Credit Plus is one avenue, but our Butler Tech programs, they have articulations with colleges. So as soon as the kids graduate, they're leaving with anywhere from five to 10 credit hours. So it's just a great opportunity you cannot pass up. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's the equivalent of leaving money on the tables, as they say. Todd, I'm sure you have numerous ways to communicate with your stakeholders and the citizens in general within your school district. But for the benefit of our listeners, I was wondering if you could just take a moment and summarize the methods you actually use across the district, because I'm sure there are numerous. Yeah, we're, we're always looking at ways to improve it. We assume a lot of people are very interested in what goes on at our Board of Education meetings, but it's just getting them to understand how they have access. So, one, they have a choice to watch it live through Waycross Television, or they can go to the Waycross website and download it and watch it at any time they want. But the communication piece is huge for us. Um, it's getting mess messages out about College Credit Plus, what's going on in our schools. This podcast, which is a great way to listen to it, take 15 minutes of your day, find out all the things that are going on in the district. 
How do you sign up for the podcast? It's getting them to go on our website and sign up for the email distribution list. We've tried to make it as simple as possible. And we're not just talking about parents. I mean, our school and our community property value goes as we go as a school district. So we want everybody in the community to know what's going on here. If you go to our home webpage, again, you can do everything. You can do the one call now icon. You can sign up for the specifics. Maybe you only want to hear information for one school. Maybe you want to hear information for the district. Maybe you only want weather closings, but you have all these choices if you go on one call now. Same thing with email notifications. So when we get the podcast finalized and Pauletta Crowley sends it out, you're on our email list. So it comes out to you and you have the option to listen to the podcast and find out any other information we're giving. And then lastly, our website nwlsd.org. That's our home webpage. And uh, also feel free to contact me at any time because we're always looking at ways to improve communication. Technology is a big way, but uh, we still need to send some things home by paper because we know our elementary kids will get them there. Our middle school and high school kids, not so much, but we are willing and, and, and wanting to do anything we can to improve our communication. So if listeners have ideals on ways we can improve it, all they have to do is send me an email or give me a call. So we just want to make sure that everybody understands our communication format. Good reminder. Well, Todd, uh, by golly, you're just about at the finish line of yet another academic school year. So what are some of the key dates our listeners need to have in their planners or calendars? Uh, uh, what can you report on this? Yeah, just want to remind everybody that it's, it's, it's prom season. It's graduation season. Um, Northwest High School graduation is June 31st at Millet Hall. Colerain High School graduation is June 2nd at Millet Hall. And then remind all the listeners, our last day of school is June 2nd. So that is Thursday, June 2nd, the last day students do report to school. I also want folks to understand that we start next school year, August 18th, reminding them that um, it is a little bit earlier than this year because we were missing days of instruction by starting late this year. And we wanted to give our kids more chance to get more days of instruction prior to state testing. So next year on August the 18th, out of the high school, only the freshmen go on Thursday, August 18th. They are doing a freshman orientation. Um, it is a big step to go from a middle school to a high school. All the responsibilities that change, going to a seven-bell day, moving around the classes, learning where your lockers are, getting ready for the rigor of high school, understanding that at your, your graduation is based on four years of, of what you do academically. So getting these freshmen off to a good start. So. Our freshmen and grades one through eight all start on August 18th, and then everybody else starts on Friday, August the 19th. So a new calendar with some adjustments will be approved by the board Monday night on the 9th. It will give the starting dates, the ending dates, so on and so forth. I'd like to remind parents that we did reduce the amount of early release days by five, so we do not have as many early release days next year. Um, and I know that sometimes becomes an issue with daycare and getting the kids home and everything else. And then the, the last two things I wanted to mention is yesterday was our National Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Um, and it's a shame sometimes it's only one day that we, we show appreciation. But our bus drivers are very important to our families and our students. They're the first person our kids see in the morning when they're on the bus, the first smile they see. And when they drop them off in the evening, um, it's pretty much the last piece of school they see unless they're going back for extracurricular. So driving in the weather all season long, driving in the dark and making sure you see the bus stops and wherever all the kids are. It's just a very important job and we're very appreciative. And then lastly, it's National Teacher Appreciation Weekend. I, I don't know of a, a profession anywhere that is more important than being a teacher and the commitment you make to students on a, a daily basis. So I truly appreciate our, our teacher efforts. I think some of them spend half their salary on their kids putting it back in school. They spend a lot of time above and beyond. They attend after school events, evening events. So I just can't tell you how much we appreciate all our staff and our teachers for Appreciation Week. Uh, May 2nd through the 6th is National Appreciation Week. So, uh, hey, say something to your teachers. What, what do you say? Well, Todd, good program today. And listeners, we appreciate your emails received in the studio you can email us anytime, shout at theflypod.com, or you can contact the superintendent's office directly. Well, Todd, what I can tell you is uh, I hope you enjoy shaking all the hands and giving out all the diplomas this uh, year at graduation. And I want to thank you again for joining me here on Super Chat. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day. 